Welcome to the Joy of Development. Today we're back in our procedural generation project, and in this episode we're going to be focusing on our doors. We'll be covering how to interact with them, how to get them to open and close, and making sure that there's a room on the other side. So let's open up our door and get started. The actor is composed of a 400 by 400 doorway, a scene component in the lower corner to act as a hinge, a static mesh actor on top of that for our door, and a box collision around the door. We also have an arrow component so that we can see the orientation of the door. Adjust the transform of the scene component until the door fits nice and snug in the doorway. Position the box collision in the center of the door, then adjust the box extent variables so that it tightly surrounds the door. After that, the door is all set and we can move on to our event graph. In here we have two events, Event Activate and New Room. Event Activate comes from our Blueprint interface. To create a Blueprint interface, we'll go back to our editor, we'll right-click in our Content Browser, go to Blueprints and Blueprint Interface. Name it whatever you like, I've named mine Activate. And when we open up the interface, we'll be able to add a new function. I've already made mine and named it Activate, so I'll delete the one that I've made right now. And we'll go back to our door. In the door, we need to open up our class settings. We'll go over to Interfaces, and in the Implemented Interfaces, we'll add our new interface. Now if you look up the names of the functions within the interface, you can use them as events. To trigger this event, we're going to go to our first person character. I've only added one thing to the first person character so far, and that's this input action activate. To create an input event, we'll go to our project settings, and in the project settings we'll go to the input tab, and we'll add a new action. I've named my action activate and set it to the E key. Add your input event to the character, and now you can fire different actions based off of pressing and releasing the key. In my case, I'm triggering a line trace by channel when the key is pressed. The origin of my line trace will start wherever my camera is positioned. Then we'll take the forward vector of our camera, extend it out by multiplying it by a float, I have mine set to 150, and then add that to the world location of our camera. Now when we preview the game and press the E key, a line will be drawn from our camera to 150 centimeters in front of it. This line can detect and analyze objects that it collides with. And in our case, we're going to be checking if the actor hit implements the activate interface. We're also going to check that the actor is valid. It's a good habit to check that other things are valid anytime you plan on interacting with them. If both of these results are true, we're going to take the actor and we're going to send it an activate message. This will trigger the activate event from our blueprint interface. Finally, back to our door. When we trigger our activate event, we'll check if the door is open or closed. If it is closed, we'll set it to open, and if it's open, we'll set it to closed. We have this running to a timeline that'll set the relative rotation of our scene component hinge. In our timeline, we have a float track. You can add tracks of different types using the bar at the top. Inside the float track, you can add new points by shift clicking. In our door yaw float track, we're starting at 90 and ending at 180, with our timeline length set at 1 second. Now if we preview the game, go up to one of our doors, and hit our activate key while looking at the door, the event will activate and the door will open. You can also press it again to close it, and you can rapidly press it with it alternating back and forth. Now we'll introduce the new room function. This will spawn a new room outside of the door once it's opened. We'll need to align the new room with the door. We'll disable its setup and work through it one step at a time. From our sequence node up top, we're going to branch off and go into a do once node. This will keep the door from spawning multiple rooms, and from there we'll generate a new room. When we preview this in the game, we can see that a room gets generated, but it's offset. To adjust the location, we're going to get the door's forward vector and multiply it by the tile size, which is 400. We'll then add that to the location of the door and this will position our room's location appropriately. If we preview the game, you can see that the top doors will actually spawn their rooms correctly. But if we move to any of the other walls, they'll spawn the rooms with the rotation offset. If we use the door's rotation, we'll get some more consistency, but everything will still be rotated counterclockwise by 90 degrees. That's an easy fix though, we'll just use a combined rotator node and add 90 degrees to the yaw. 
Now, when we spawn a new room, it'll have the right orientation. We can now spawn new rooms infinitely by just opening up the doors. This is, however, where we run into one of our major problems. Spawning new rooms creates new walls, and some of these new walls are intersecting our old ones. This will block off some of our doorways. We also have the problem that if we spawn a new room oriented towards a room that already exists, the rooms will intersect. This adds lots of issues to gameplay and can easily strand a player in a room with no doors. I'll be covering multiple ways to address these problems in future videos. Until then, try and come up with your own solutions. This has been the joy of development. Be sure to subscribe, hit the bell icon, and smash that like button.